All right, eighth graders, this is to help you with question five on CR 13. It says multiply, and I didn't even prepare to read this number, so these would be thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, I don't know, centillions, maybe that's 50 centillions. I could be making that up. That's a really big number. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.00000432. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, four hundred thirty-two billions. By converting to and then writing your answer in scientific notation. Okay. They're asking us to convert to scientific notation, then to multiply than to give our answer in scientific notation. Okay, so I'm going to take this first number and convert that to scientific notation. So I know my first factor has to be greater than 1 and greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 1 for your first factor, greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So we say, okay, 5 or 5.0 would be our first factor. Then you got to multiply by some power of 10. So it's going to be 10 to some power. You have to decide, will that power be a positive or a negative? Well, if you're talking about a really, really big number, the power will be positive. And what will be that power on 10, that exponent? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I believe, let's hope, so as I didn't make a mistake, that would be 5 or 5.0 times 10 to the 19th. Okay, this one right here is a teeny, teeny, tiny number. So again, it will be 4.32 because that first number has to be between greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So that's how I know to, where to put my new decimal point. And now because it's a teeny, teeny, tiny number, I know it's going to be times 10 to now a negative exponent because it's a teeny, tiny number. And what will that negative exponent be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now we have 5 times 10 to the 19th. We're going to multiply that by 4.32 times 10 to the negative 7th. So the first thing we have to do is multiply 5 by 4.32. So here's my little scrap off to the side. I'm going to take 4.32 times 5. 5 times 2 is 10. I should also tell you, I would quickly at this point do 4 times 5 is 20, and no, my answer has to be somewhere around 20. So if I don't get an answer near 20, I know I'll have made a mistake there. 5 times 2 is 10, put down a 0, carry a 1. 5 times 3 is 15, and 1 more is 16, put down a 6, carry a 1. 5 times 4 is 20, and 1 is 21. So I don't really need to guess where my decimal point goes. I knew my answer had to be somewhere around 20. 5 times 4 is 20. So my decimal point is going to go right here, 21.60. You could also know that by knowing you move over two decimal places there, which gave you two decimal places in the answer. So it's 21.6 or .60 if you want, times 10 to the, well, what do we do with exponents when we have the same base and we're multiplying? We go ahead and we add those exponents, so that's 19 plus negative 7. So this is 21.6 times 10 to the 19 plus negative 7 would be a positive 12. If you started at 19, moved 7 left, you'd end up at 12. But we're not quite done because they need our answer in scientific notation. So at that point, we got to fall back on our old friend Lars. If you're going to move your decimal point to the left, oops, sorry about that, to the left, you're going to add, right, subtract. So we're going to move left 1, which means we'd add 1. So it's 2.16 times 10 to the 13th power. 2.16 times 10 to the 13th. 
All right, I hope that helps. So th there was a lot to this problem. Remembering that when you have really big numbers, the power on 10 is positive exponent. When you have teeny tiny numbers, you're going to have a negative exponent. When we need to multiply numbers in scientific notation, you multiply those first factors. You keep the base 10. You add those exponents. And then if you're at 21.6, you've got to put it back in scientific notation using your Lars left add. There's a lot to that problem. I hope that helps.